Okay. Oh, one second. Almost ready. Oh, what a lovely shot. Welcome to another episode of Five Idiots Talking Toys. I'm Shane, and we are here for part two of our discussion about some recent Star Wars news. The news was very slim. It's about the fact that the Mandalorian and Grogu are coming to the big screen. There is a Mandalorian movie that was officially acknowledged and is in the works, the very beginnings. So we're excited about that. There wasn't a lot of news about it, but we've turned it into quite a conversation about uh, what's been going on with Star Wars the last bunch of years, the generational uh, shift of who likes what, the younger kids like this, that, how did the uh, prequel trilogy did. Uh, it was a fun conversation. We're going to pick it up right now and jump into part two. Thanks for being here. Please hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. It would really help our channel. We appreciate it. Like the video and comment. Let us know what you think of the new movie for Mandalorian and the other projects that are in the works. How did you like Ahsoka that was out recently? Obi-Wan, what series did you like and didn't like? Tell us in the comments. Let's jump into the conversation. We'll, uh, we'll see what more fun stuff we can discuss. Thanks for being here. It's time for Five Idiots Talking Toys. <laughs> when I talk about the Star Wars franchise... I don't think people are going to really look back at the movies and say the movies are killing it. I think these spin-offs and these TV shows are killing it. I don't think 1, 2, and 3 killed Star Wars. I don't think 7, 8, and 9 honestly killed Star Wars. I killed really Star Wars or killed it like did well? Like killed oh, it like, mean like... Killed it like dead. Yeah, killed it like dead. Okay. Like I think 1, 2, and 3 did its job, like Charles said, yeah. bringing on kids. I'm just saying that I don't think these TV shows that they keep spinning off of, I don't think those are going to do a good lasting effect at keeping people into the show. Mandalorian, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, the kids love, love Mandalorian. They, I mean, this my kids have Baby a... Yoda bed sheets and, and bathrobes and stuff like that. This movie is going to be a big tell. Season three was really bad. Season three was banging. Bad. I watched good. it so many times. It was there was so only good. one people bad were, episode. Yep, people are creaming their episode, pants over the, the return of Luke Skywalker. It so was that, so you know, good. The return of Luke Skywalker in Mandalorian. What was that? The end of season one? End of season two. Ooh, and then two? Season three. And I mean, that was, the, that was the best episode I ever saw on I, TV. I, yeah. I know. I'm a 40 something year old man at the time when that came out, and that was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Like, I agree too. <laughs> no. I almost Shane, fell off Shane the couch. Shane R2, was weeping on the couch. R2-D2, <laughs> Luke Jedi, it's, uh, it was amazing. I was Dark. losing my... Yeah, I mean, John, like, woke up from, like, his, his uh, you know, <laughs> midday... When he wakes up, does it... Folks home. When he wakes up, Brandon, does it sound like it did in the hotel room? How many days is he away, uh, uh, Brandon? <laughs> three days away from the, from the nursing home. <laughs> Are we recording in the next three days? We got to get him on again before he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he died in the hotel. I'm gonna be honest. You were in the shower. I was sitting there on the phone, and next thing you know, uh, that that I thought he died. I was or, I was like in bed, third. like uh, like looking at my phone or something. You were, oh no, it was the morning time. I was like waking up, looking at my phone. You jump in the shower. You 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 tied one on the night before or something. You're you're hacking a little bit in the in the bathroom. I hear you trying to clear your throat, but he was legitimately dying. <laughs> I mean, he was poor. Poor John got Brandon put him on the rollaway cart. What do they, what do they call that? Cot cart? Roll, it's a rollaway bed. Don't it, you mean they put him on this like little uh, toddler bed that folds in half? We put and him he, on the gurney. Okay. It was a gurney. They rolled it into the room. <laughs> it had wheels. They put him on a wheeled bed. He was practicing for the old folks' home. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> so funny. 
Uh, I, we we should have not that we want I a video, you I know, each wait. other in the room. But if we had just done the voice recorder and got the sound effects of that, Brandon, I can't, I can't wait till this. Till yeah, no kidding. We should have been recording. Oh, it was going, Charles. It, this was not like we didn't have to quick grab our phones. This was going on for thirty solid minutes. Like just getting a minute of it would have been something. <laughs> oh God, poor well, bastard has edited all this, and he doesn't even know what's coming. He's editing all this out. None of this is making the episode. So. Uh, so back onto the topic, Mando movie, uh, we, we, you know, the reason why we're not really talking about it too much in depth is it was just announced today. I'm going to throw up, uh, no information on it. Yeah. I'm going to throw up this, uh, this first quote, just a couple of things to put on the screen. Uh, this is John Favreau. Of course, uh, I've loved telling stories set in the rich world that George Lucas created, the prospect of bringing the Mandalorian and his apprentice Grogu to the big screen is extremely exciting. And listen, uh, I completely understand for him that it is. He created yep. this character. Yeah. Um, you know, him and, and Dave Filoni, they they created this character out of nothing. And that's just an amazing amazing accomplishment to add such a popular and lovable, you know, duo of characters into such an established franchise like Star Wars. But Chris can say what he wants about, you know, whether it's caught on with kids or not. I mean, you cannot go into a store. Name a supermarket, a TJ Maxx, a Target. I mean, name a store. You cannot go in there and not see Grogu on something. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, come on. It's everywhere. So, uh, women, girls, you know, love that character. And, and I say that only because, you know, traditionally they, they were not Star Wars' number one uh, demographic. But my wife has got Grogu t-shirts. My daughter loves it. Kids oh, love hey. it. I mean, come on. When he was... When he was first released, he was all over the place. Like, and it was the it was the everything. Baby Yoda thing. Remember, oh, it was yeah. the big Baby Yoda craze because nobody knew what to call him. Huge. I'm I'm pretty excited for this. Um, for two reasons, I think that they are going to pull out all the stops because it's a major motion film. Mm -hmm. So they are going to go overboard probably um and the second reason is i think we're gonna get to see some people that they're gonna bring some people back i have a feeling i don't know who or what characters but i have a feeling that they're kind of like when luke skywalker came back and mark hamill actually reprised the role and played that i, I have a feeling that something similar to that is going to happen and we're gonna get to see somebody special again i don't know who but um, I think they're going to wait for the movie to do that. And I, I just think it's going to be really cool. So yeah, you I'm make a really good point. It. It's new content. It's in the movie theater to tell you the truth, watching stuff on TV. It's fine, but it ain't the movie theater. And oh, yeah, every time good. they have like a 40th, you know, return of the Jedi, like in the movie theater. And I'm kind of like yeah. bummed out that they only had it like for a few days yeah. for the 40th anniversary. Like I only got to see it once during that release period, like if they would have had it for at least a month, I would have gone a few more times. It could have made a lot. I don't know. I would have been by myself in there, but, uh, <laughs> but I like, I love seeing it on the big screen with the sound yeah. and all that. It just makes the movie worth it. So if they're going to, I think it's going to be really good. They're going to, like I said, they're going to pull out all the, all oh, the, they're going to kill it. Gonna, gonna kill it's going to be great. I, yeah. I have a feeling it's going to be really good. I know yeah. people throw a lot of hate, hate on there, but you know, you, you make a really good point, and I brought this up uh, in the past talking about Mandalorian and, and, and through conversation. You're making me think, if if Luke Skywalker is not in this movie, even if it's just, you know, a scene, if he's not in this movie, it'll kind of be an upset at this point because they had him in the, the episode that we talked about, then they had him in another episode for a short bit, and they were using the, the, the CGI that they had, and, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't perfect. They had that. There was that guy who did the 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 deep fake. Yeah, yeah. That Lucasfilm hired. Lucasfilm hired him. He did a better job with Luke Skywalker than Lucasfilm did. So they hired him. I mean, come on, he's got Luke Skywalker's got to be in the movie now. So, and I'll I'll share this on our. Uh, I'll, I'll put it as like a short or something on there, but. Mm -hmm. um, I went to, I know you guys are, won't be surprised by this. I went to San Francisco Fan Expo, and, and Mark Hamill was there uh, in December, or November, actually. 
And when Luke, when he came on, when Luke, when Mark Hamill came on the stage for like the Q and A thing where uh, people got to you know see him in person talking and all that kind of stuff. He didn't face a crowd. He walked on and he had his back to the crowd and he did this thing where where he released his, you know, his hood back like that, kind of like he mm-hmm. did in, in Mando, where he did that where he released his hood and everybody saw that it was right. know, Skywalker and everybody's like freaking out. And the same thing for Return of the Jedi. Right. Same scene where he's just like Shh. Yep. Um but That's people awesome. lost their shit, you know, and every you know, so did he have the glove on? No, <laughs> oh, it would be cool if he had the black the black leather glove on. Yeah. Um, that's cool though. Yeah, uh, I know that he, you've told us over this course of this show that he does very few shows. He hadn't done a show in a in a while. This was his um, first show since 2017. His first yeah. um, kind of con since 2017. He's done public appearances, obviously, but yeah, this was his first fan interactive autograph slash picture taking uh, thing, whatever. So I mean. And I heard recently, right. I think a picture a, right there. Oh, you have it in the uh, vintage frame. Yeah. Nice. That's a Sigma. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard recently that he's done with the Joker as, as well. Um, I saw an article that uh, he was saying, like, unless something, something happens, I'm, I'm done doing the Joker's voice. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't follow that. So I don't know how long ago he stopped doing that. But, um, you know, that's pretty, he's pretty well known for that as, as well in the DC yeah. universe. Um, so I think you're right. I, I really didn't think too hard about this movie yet in terms of what it could be or what we might see, but now you've got my brain spinning that, I mean, we already saw it at the end of Rogue One and now they have even better technology. Uh, maybe there's some Leia in the movie, yeah. right? Because she is, uh, Luke Skywalker's first student Mm-hmm. in the Jedi Temple, is it called? Or Jedi Academy. Yeah. And we saw already in Mandalorian him beginning to build the first physical part of the of the Academy. So, you know, we're five years after Return of the Jedi as of Mando Season 3. If this is going to pick up shortly thereafter, Luke's got a Jedi t- a- Academy. Yeah. You know, let's see that. So that's pretty exciting. All right, well, the other, uh, let me throw up the one other quote I have, and then we're going to wrap this bad boy up. Um, This is from Brandon's favorite, Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni have ushered into Star Wars two new and beloved characters, and this new story is a perfect fit for the big screen. You know, it's funny to hear that last part of that because it's been on the small screen for three seasons. I think that that last part of the quote gets shoehorned in there to, to to fit the dialogue they want right now. Because they really, I, I, I just know that they really uh, are, are kicking themselves that they've waited so long to put another Star Wars vehicle in the movie theater because you're talking about big, big bucks. And the reason why there hasn't been one is because of Solo, which I've told you guys annoys me because I love Solo, and I might be in the minority, but I love that oh, movie. I love Solo. Yeah, I love well, that movie. Well, I might I, watch it tonight. Lando is amazing in it. Uh, I love seeing like where Han met Chewbacca. Yep. I love that scene. Yep. It's just and and Woody Harrelson's great. It's just fantastic. So, um, that's the reason why there has not been a Star Wars movie is because they call that a bust. And when you look at the box office, yes, it's nowhere near the typical Star Wars movie, but it didn't lose money. It made some money. They should have just licked their wounds on that and said, you know what? For the first time, we didn't have a, a you know a, a killer box office. Move on and make the next one, and it's it, it's going to be a totally different story. Move on. And they didn't. They took Obi-Wan to the small screen. So now they're realizing maybe that was a mistake and... They're taking. They're doing the opposite. They're taking one of their small screen vehicles to the big screen. So that'll be fun. Mando, uh, this Mando uh, movie will be huge. I'll make a prediction. Mm-hmm. It's going to be. They're going to make a lot of money on it. Uh, Charles, would you give the the chance of this being hu- a huge success? One thumb up or two thumbs up? <laughs> he doesn't have the effects on his computer. It's going to be huge. Oh, it doesn't work for you. Nah. I'm going to give it. Two thumbs up. <laughs> I don't even know how it does that. I I went away for Christmas. I come back and now we have CGI on our show. It only works for you and Chris. Oh damn! Get Chris back. This is the um. I think you guys have your 
It has to do with your Apple computers, I think. Okay. We're special. So, another prediction. This is just a bonus. We will see the return of the Razor Crest. You think so? I hope so. How so, <laughs> though? Like he'll I get a different so. a different one of that model? I hope I, so. I, hope so. I paid $800 <laughs> for, my, for my Razor Crest uh, HasLab. I am down about 300 bucks on this thing. Wait a minute. Where the hell are you storing that? You have a little it's, coat closet. That's where it is. It's actually taking up so much Lego room that I thought about selling it and losing money. And I'm like, you know what? It's going to be worth so much money. I, I just have a feeling it's going to be worth. That Katana is worth a zillion dollars. Yeah. It's going to be worth a lot of money one day. I think if they bring that stupid vehicle back, the stupid Razor Crest. Well, what, what's, the, what's the prediction that he's going to get another of the same model ship? Because that one was blown to pieces. They, I think they were hinting to that, kind of like, "Hey, do you have any, you know, whatever?" I don't. I, I got to rewatch it, but I think okay. they're hinting towards that. I have no idea what Brandon's talking about, but all he said was Razor Crest. And yeah, I'm, I'm full. Ra Razor Crest. On... This yeah. Razor Crest. Yeah. My closet. What did you say? Yeah, I'm full on it. <laughs> I, I love the ship that he has now. I, I when I, I remember when it first came on screen, and I was like. And one oh, time. that's that's like Anakin ship. Yeah, that's, he, I guess that's kind of cool. But then when they built it and he took the test flight, I'm like, yeah. this is it's, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. But it, he can't like hold it. anybody. In, he no, can't he, he can't bounty hunting in that thing. It's cheesy. No, it's they're going to have another Razor Crest. Trust me. Everybody's he, he pissed can't off bounty about hunting it. that thing. I, Everybody's I pissed so. off about it. Hasbro's losing money. We're all losing money. Disney's losing money. Why right. the hell <laughs> would they have Haslab make that thing? And as soon as it gets delivered to Charles's doorstep by the UPS man, the same night they blow the ship up to so a million pieces. That, I bought that thing was going things. for a G. It was going for a thousand dollars. Yeah, I got it for eight. I think eight hundred and sixteen dollars ship to my house. It's five hundred dollars. Okay, rent. well, just hold because the same I am. thing happened with the katana. <laughs> except that really, the, the difference between the katana is that it was five hundred dollars. Um, people didn't really know about Haslab at the time. It was kind of new or whatever. It didn't sell as many. A lot of people didn't buy it because it was five hundred dollars, and it's fucking humongous. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. they didn't want to buy it and store it, whatever. And a lot of people didn't buy it. So now people caught on to Haslab and they're like, oh, it, the Katana was worth all this money. So it's kind of was 500 bucks and went up to when it first came out to like a grand. And then it came back down to like 600, 700 bucks. And I remember like that. that. And then now it shot up to God knows what. It's like 12 or 1300, isn't it? Or it was uh, at one point. No, it was something going for like 20. I thought it's over $2,000. Oh, dollars. really? Bucks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know what? I never thought about this before, but you made a re you made a really smart point. It also got blown up into a zillion pieces yeah. on screen. It's just that it happened before everybody bought the toy. I mean, that's so crushing to make a toy, and you're like, oh my god, I got the Mandalorian ship, and then it felt like it was a day later they blew the whole damn thing up, and it's like, it was Whoa. almost to the day where it came out and they blew it up. Yeah, it was such a bad marketing move. I don't get it, but I thought um, it was such a smart like investment. I thought it was so smart. Well, I, I have a feeling they're going to bring it back in this movie. Yeah. That's bonus well, footage. We'll, we'll see. Um, finally, <laughs> the last thing I just want to throw on the screen is this. And this was kind of tucked into the bottom of the article. And it's now, you know, it was quickly making headlines on its own. Razor Crest. Ahsoka season two. Ahsoka. So the footnote kind of at the end of the article is a very short article. Uh, was that uh, there's other things in development, and uh, what were they pointing to? They were saying um, uh, Chris's favorite director, uh, Charmin Obeid Chinoy, is working on the Ray vehicle, the Ray, the Ray movie, that we don't have any info about yet, and that uh, James Mangold is also working on a project. And finally, Dave Filoni is currently developing Ahsoka Season 2. So I was happy to see that. Um, it's very simple for me to say. Uh, I, I I could not imagine any chance that there was not going to be an Ahsoka season two. The only other option would have been to go straight to a movie, which I did not believe was going to happen because when you watch Ahsoka, if you haven't watched it yet, uh, it is a half a season of a show. I mean, I, I understand it's eight episodes, but 
you watch that and it feels like one of those old, you know, older shows like Sopranos or Breaking Bad or where they split the last season in half and then you got to wait a year to pick up the season mm -hmm. again. There's no ending of a season. You're left straight up on a cliffhanger. So, of course, there's going to be a season two, and I'm glad it's confirmed. I Agreed. am glad it's a season two. There were a few just horrendous episodes in Ahsoka, but some were also good. But then again, they don't care what a 40-plus-year-old male thinks. They no. want the little you know, little girls or little kids or whatever. And apparently they liked it. Well, everything that you said earlier in this episode about rewatching and rewatching quickly, I've already told you that I've, you know, basically rewatched it with my kids. Yeah. I, I've been meaning to tell you this, the, 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 the notorious episode three, I don't think oh, we'll ever, oh, I don't okay. think we'll ever oh. forget what do episode, it. episode three was. I know. Don't do it though. No. Don't say it. When she goes outside of the ship oh. and does the the kung fu matrix yes, parkour, right. yes. my kids six and nine are on the couch. They were blown away like they just saw the Mona Lisa for the first time. That reminded me. They of were like, the "That was the coolest Leia. thing I've ever seen." That reminded me of the Leia floating through space thing. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they when she. When she basically cut two ships in half with a lightsaber in space, they thought it was one of the greatest Star Wars moments they've ever seen. So when you talk about the kids and the kids are hooked and they're looking for the kids, no, I know. I'll tell I you, know. my kids love that. And I'm I'm not saying you're wrong. Just right. in my eyes, that was horrendous. But yeah. I could see where you're coming from. And then when they saw the zombies, the zombie stormtroopers, they thought that was, they were like, oh my God, how those are there cool. zombies in Star Wars? This is the I greatest like thing. Yeah, those are cool. So cool. Like and they like Commander Pyre with the gold is that face. What they were? Those were? Those were zombies? Yeah, the yeah. Uh, the witch, you, they they, the witches used the green curse, that green oh, stuff. Must have, must and they were like undead stormtroopers. <laughs> you didn't see the whole undead stormtrooper thing? Uh, I was like, <laughs> oh no, you got to go back, Brandon, because they're all like. Yeah. The, they're, they're really cool is, looking. My problem is, is that I, I, I watch these after everyone's gone to bed so I can have some peace and quiet. And it's <laughs> too fall peace, asleep. It's too peace and quiet. And I, yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're on your third Japanese whiskey. It's quiet. You know, it's, uh, it's one o'clock in the morning and you have no, there's no chance of you staying awake. <laughs> All right. So that's what we got. We've got Mando and Grogu coming to the big screen. I mean, you know how this stuff goes, guys. I mean, it's, it's, we just started 2024. We're probably not seeing this thing until 2026, for all we know. But at least uh, it's been confirmed. It's in the pipeline. Ahsoka is in the pipeline. And uh, there's some other projects going to, which, uh, you know, I always say this. I'm excited whenever there's going to be new Star Wars content. I know That's my kids right. will like it. I like to see what they're doing. You know, you take the good with the bad. That's how I look at it. Yep. All right. I think we're uh, I think we're done here. Chris popped off. He's on baby duty. We knew that was going to happen. He didn't just mysteriously disappear. So we're glad that he could join us. Pull his out. His teeth. We're glad he could join us for as long as he did. Thanks very much for watching the show, everybody. Please go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash 5 idiots talking toys. It's down in the description. Click on that link. Check out what's going on over there. You can support the show if you like what we're doing for... A few dollars a month. The cup, the cost of a cup of coffee. But you'll also get our exclusive oh, series. Bar. Five Idiots After Dark, After Dark, After Dark. So dark. So dark. Charles curses the entire time. It's not family friendly. I but we do, we do talk about some fun topics that we would talk about on YouTube as well. But we give, we give some fun episodes just for our patrons who support the show. So check that out. You can subscribe to the channel right now, please, on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Smash it. Smash it like you're an eight-year-old uh, watching uh, nonsense. It's right there. Right? What, is, what does Chris do? Like, it's here, it's there, it's there. It's there. All right. Be, we're not signing off until you hit the subscribe button. Guys, we're not done anymore. we got to wait. There's 4,000 people watching this episode right I'm now. Waiting. They're all going to subscribe. I'm waiting. All right. Oh, I just got confirmation. Okay, they're all subscribed. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you next time on Five Idiots Talking Toys. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you. Where's John? John doesn't.
doesn't even know. John Alden. John has Nursing no home he is. Asleep in his bed, he will be. 